Hey, what's up? Mozzarella sticks are kind of labor intensive to make at home, but that's not a good enough reason not to try. Today, I'm gonna show you two different ways to make them, including my favorite way that's not traditional at all, but it comes from my restaurant days and it totally smokes anything you can get in a basket at a sports restaurant. To get started on the stick version of this appetizer, I'll need some mozzarella cheese. Specifically, this is one pound or roughly a half kilo block of full fat aged mozzarella. Full fat mozzarella here over part skin because more fat is more flavor and it produces a better cheese pull in my opinion. Now I'm going to cut this one pound block into three slabs. They're about three quarters of an inch thick, give or take. From there, I'll cut those into planks. Again, about a half inch to three quarters of an inch. And I'll weigh each one to get an idea of exactly what size I'm looking for. One ounce or roughly 30 grams is going to give us a piece of cheese that will melt properly in the amount of time it takes the breading to get brown. Larger than this and the cheese will be solid, that's no fun, and smaller the cheese will be liquefied and explode. That's also no fun. One pound of cheese gives me just about 16 pieces. Now I'll scoot these out of the way and set up my mozzarella stick breading station. For that, I'll grab a medium bowl and then grab a whole box or about 225 grams of Japanese style panko breadcrumbs. Please don't use the powdery Italian breadcrumbs that you see in meatloaf or meatball recipes. That stuff's ground too fine and won't give us a proper crunch. Next, I'll add in 50 grams of grated Parmesan cheese, three grams of onion powder, three grams of garlic powder, two grams of chili flake, one gram of dried oregano, one gram of dried basil and three grams of salt. I'll whisk that to combine and that's what we're gonna cover these cheese sticks with. From here, I'll add about one cup of all-purpose flour into a little glass bowl and then four eggs into the one next door. I'll whisk those up with a fork and there we go, a standard issue three-stage breading setup. First, I'll drop the cheese into the flour and toss it around to get a good powdery base layer. Next, into the eggs and I like to use a fork here to keep my hands dry because breading stuff can be a total nightmare and a mess if your hands get wet. So stay frosty use a fork and keep that egg off of your bod. Once the cheese is well coated with egg, I'll give it a chance to drain so I don't pollute my breader with too much sticky wet stuff and then into the breader it goes. Now I'll toss this breadcrumb mixture all over this eggy cheese to get as much of it touching that egg wash as possible. I want every bit of this little cheese stick covered. Now that looks pretty good, but it's not enough to hold that cheese inside while being fried. So we need to repeat this breading one more time. First, I'll run the rest of this cheese through their first round of breader. And once I have 16 single breaded cheese sticks like this, I'll take a quick second to top off my egg wash. Uh, yoop, five eggs in total would be a better starting point. Okay, the stick goes back into the egg mixture, just like before. I'll toss it around with my fork and then I'll lift it out and try to get as much of that excessive egg to drip off as possible. Now for the second time, I'll toss this cheese stick with all of these breadcrumbs to get as much stuck to it as possible. I'll give it a fluff, I'll give it a toss, and there we go, a double breaded stick of mozzarella that's well coated but not over coated. Once the whole crew's been double dipped in breading like this, I'll move the tray over to the fridge to keep the cheese chill and I quickly make some marinara dipping sauce. For that, I'll drop a nonstick pan over medium heat, and when that's hot, I'll squeeze in three to four tablespoons of olive oil. Then in goes 15 grams of minced garlic, and I'll sweat that until it's softened or just starting to take on some light golden brown color like this. From there, I'll add in my tomato base. What's that? It's one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, 50 grams of tomato paste, seven grams of salt, 10 grams of sugar, a strong pinch of chili flake, a half gram of oregano, a half gram of basil, and then in goes my immersion blender to spin everything up. I'm spinning this because some brands of crushed tomatoes have more texture than others. And for a dipping sauce, I want to eliminate any chunkiness that might get in the way of a perfectly coated stick. Now I'll stir this to combine. I'll clean that up and then I'll stir it to combine. I'll bring it up to a gentle simmer and I'll reduce the heat to medium low and cook this sauce for about 20 minutes. While that cooks, I'll have a quick snack from the sponsor of this video, Monk Pack. Monk Pack makes keto-friendly snack bars that are great for anyone trying to cut back on sugar and carbohydrates, but still wanting something that tastes like you're being kind of bad. Checking out the numbers here, their keto granola bars and their nut and seed bars have a gram of sugar or less, only two to three grams of net carbs, and are 150 calories or less each. My current favorite is this almond butter cocoa chip, which tastes just like the junky chocolate granola bars that I used to eat as a kid and has become a welcome substitute for my usual adult afternoon stack of canned mackerel. Monkpack also sent me the peanut butter dark chocolate, the coconut cocoa chip, and the sea salt dark chocolate, all of which are gluten-free, plant-based, and non-GMO. So to try these out, head to monkpack.com and enter code BRIAN at checkout to get 20% off your first purchase of any Monkpack product. They're so confident that you'll like it, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. Exchange for another bar or get your money back. 
That's a risk-free snack, basically. Click the link in my description, use code Brian at checkout for 20% off your first purchase. Snack time over, back to the sauce. 20 minutes later, this sauce has thickened up just enough to hold itself up and the garlic has softened and mellowed out. Perfect, now I'm gonna set this off to the side and drop a pot on my stove to fry my sticks. In goes two quarts of neutral frying oil. In this case, I'm using vegetable oil, which is made from soy? That's not a vegetable, you guys, it's a bean. Look, I know soy oil isn't like a health food, but we're making fried cheese sticks here, so that's not really the point. Once the oil's at 325F, 160C, I'll drop in my first six sticks. As you can see, I'm laying these in with my spider. That's a safety thing to keep my hands away from the hot oil splashes if they happen. I have a bunch of scars on my wrists from playing it fast and loose with fryer oil over the years, so be careful, you guys. Use a spider if you've got one. Now, these mozzarella sticks are gonna fry up super quickly, about two and a half to three minutes in total. The only thing that I need to do while they cook is to come back with my spider after the first 30 seconds to check and make sure they're not sticking to each other or the bottom of the pot. After three minutes in total of fry time, when I come back to check on these sticks, they're beautifully golden brown and just starting to leak a little bit of cheese. Don't worry about that leak though. If we double breaded these properly, that cheese isn't going anywhere. Personally, I think these look awesome. They're kind of gnarly and craggy thanks to those coarse panko breadcrumbs. And again, don't sweat a little bit of cheese leak here. Those holes are self-sealing. The second that they're on the draining rack, they cool off and the cheese solidifies shutting them off. But Bri, what about the cheese pull? That's why we clicked. Well, check this out. If I haven't said it, mozzarella sticks are fun. The breading is savory and deeply flavorful thanks to the onion, garlic, and dried herbs. And the full fat mozzarella here is flavorful and stretchy. And when you combine it with the crispy panko, it's like perfect. Okay, now for my favorite way to eat breaded and fried mozzarella cheese. This version is a copycat of an appetizer at one of my mentor's restaurants here in St. Louis. It's called Pastoria and the dish is called risotto balls. It's kind of a take on the Italian arancini, which is essentially a fried rice ball stuffed with mozzarella. The original idea comes from Gerard Kraft, who is the owner slash chef of the restaurant, and he's a total bad boy and a former chef slash mentor of mine. This is Gerard holding his James Beard Award with me standing next to him. I used to weigh like 25 more pounds when I worked in his restaurants. Anyways, check out Pastoria because I think you'll love it. I'll throw a link down in the description and thank you to Gerard for the inspiration here. Now to make risotto balls, we need to make risotto. For that into a preheated Dutch oven, I'll squeeze three to four tables of olive oil and then I'll add 100 grams of small diced onion, 15 grams of minced garlic and 10 grams of salt. I'll stir that to combine and gently cook everything together over medium heat for five to six minutes or until the aromatics are softened and just starting to get translucent like this. Next, in goes 200 grams of Arborio style rice. Don't use jasmine or basmati here because they're not starchy enough to hold this ball together. From here, I'll fry the rice together with the veggies for three to four minutes or until it's starting to get translucent around the edges. Once it is, I'll add in 200 grams of cheap white wine. I'm using Boda Box brand Chardonnay and it works great for this. Now I'll cook this wine off for about three minutes and once it's reduced all the way and the rice is just about starting to stick to the bottom of the pot, I'll add in 500 grams of water. Traditionally, if you're making risotto for like a high-end entree, this water would be preheated and boiling when you add it. It makes a small difference in terms of rice texture, but since this risotto is gonna be breaded and fried, it's just easier to skip that boiling step. Once the water is absorbed by the rice, or about 10 minutes later, in goes a second round of 500 grams. I'll stir that in, bring it to a simmer, lower the heat to medium, and then pop on the lid so that I can cook it for about 10 more minutes. 10 minutes later, or roughly 20 minutes since we started simmering the rice here, it should have absorbed nearly all of the water and it should be swollen and starchy almost to the point of being overcooked. We definitely don't want any al dente rice in our fried cheese ball. To finish off heat, I'll add 125 grams of grated Parmesan cheese and a few chunks of nice butter. Now I'll give that a stir to get things melted together. And I'll mention that this recipe is my go-to for risotto, not just for fried cheese ball risotto. I use the same ratios, but maybe double for a larger batch. And I cook the rice just a touch less. Now I can't bread this steaming hot rice. So before I turn it into a fried cheese ball, I need to cool it down. So I'm gonna move this onto a plate to cool off until it's room temperature for about 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, I'll grab my stand mixer and in the bowl of that, I'll slide my risotto. 
get it all in there, and then I'll add in 125 grams of the same full fat mozzarella cheese that we just made into sticks. Next, I'll add on my paddle attachment and spin this mixture until the rice is broken down slightly and the cheese is well mixed in. Once it's spun up, you can see that the rice is slightly broken down, but mostly still rice. It looks starchy though, and the cheese is fully mixed in. That's ideal. So next, using a tablespoon measure, I'm going to scoop out a very full tablespoon's worth. Let's call it what it is. That's like two tablespoons. Then I'll flip it into the palm of my hand and then roll it up into a ball. Once I have 20 very rough looking balls of mozzarella risotto like this, I'm going to move the tray into my freezer so everything can firm up enough to bread for about 20 minutes. 20 minutes later, I've got the exact same breading station set up from before. And as you can see, these have firmed up quite a bit while they were in the freezer and now they're sticky enough to roll into a tight ball. Once I've got it rolled up, I'm going to throw it into the flour, then the egg, then the breader. Toss it around in the breader, then back to the egg, then back to the breader. Wait a minute, check out how I didn't drain off the excess eggs like I did before. As soon as I toss this, you see the problem that this causes. Too much wet egg in the breadcrumbs makes clumpy breading that's not ideal. There's more! Get that out of here, dude. Now I'll cover that wet spot, toss, 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 get it dusted up, and there we go. Once all of these balls are double coated like this, I'm gonna breed another pot of two quarts of neutral frying oil, just like before. And once it's at 325F, 160C, I'll add in six of these risotto balls. Just like for the sticks, these are gonna take about three minutes to get crispy on the outside and melty all the way through. After three minutes of fry time, when I check back, you can see that these look really dope. Golden brown, check. Crispy looking, check. Now I'll scoot them over to a paper towel lined sheet tray to drain them off. And you guys, these might be the best appetizer in the world. I mean, I know I just said that about mozzarella sticks and I'm not trying to be hyperbolic here, but this is starchy, cheesy rice with more cheese inside that's been double breaded and then fried. Look at that world-class cheese pull. And oh yeah, don't forget about the tomato sauce. That stuff is concentrated and sweet, but not too sweet. It's super robust and deeply savory. It's the perfect match for a nearly perfect food. You guys, you probably should be breading and frying cheese at home more often. Whether you go with the stick or ball version, I think you're going to be stoked, and I really hope you try these soon. Let's eat this thing.